Okay, hello and welcome to this weather update. It's 9.30 on August 26, 2020, and obviously what we're going to be talking about here is Hurricane Laura. Category 4 Hurricane Laura could become a Category 5 as it starts zeroing in on a landfall. It looks like right around Lake Charles, Louisiana uh, and Beaumont. Uh, this is a really tight wrapped up storm, just as the models predicted. Um, luckily, it looks like New Orleans misses out, the big cities miss out. But it, it's still going to affect people in this area. Well, Beaumont is still a city that's really going to get hit very hard. And this is going to be a major disaster. Uh, we're very lucky that it's not hitting uh, either New Orleans or Houston. But this is a very wrapped up storm. Perfect symmetry. You can clearly see that well-defined eye. The rain bands, uh, all of that. Uh, here it is on the satellite loop. Uh, and you can see it's getting closer to making a landfall here. Uh, just refreshed itself, I guess, but uh, it's getting closer to making a landfall right in, the, it looks like, right at that border area between Louisiana and Texas, and this thing is really, just really wrapped up. So let's get the latest from the, Na the National Hurricane Center on Hurricane Laura right now, the latest public advisory, which is at 7 p.m. Uh, winds increasing as dangerous Hurricane Laura takes aim at the northwest Gulf Coast. Catastrophic storm surge, extreme winds, and flash flooding expected along the northwest Gulf Co Coast tonight. As of 7 p.m. tonight, its location is 28.4 north, 92.9 west, uh, about 120 miles south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and about 120 miles south, southeast of Port Arthur, Texas. However, we're closing in on 10 o'clock, so I'm assuming there's going to be another update really soon. Maximum stain winds, 150 miles an hour. This thing could go to a Cat 5. Uh, it's in Cat 4, strong Cat 4 territory right now, Category 4, but it could become a Category 5. The good news is it's moving north-northwest at 15 miles an hour, so it's not crawling. Uh, but the minimum social pressure is 940 millibars, or 27.76 inches. Uh, and we got the storm surge warning in effect from Freeport, Texas, to the mouth of the Mississippi River. Hurricane warning in effect from San Luis Pass, Texas, to Intercoastal City, Louisiana. Tropical storm warning in effect for Sargent, Texas, to St. Louis Pass, and east of the Intercoastal Louisiana t to the mouth of the Mississippi. Hurricane watches in effect for east of Intercoastal City, uh, uh, west uh, of uh, Morgan City. But you got that hurricane warning in effect again from St. Louis Pass, Texas, to Intercoastal City, Louisiana. Um, and the storm surge is going to be significant with this. So as of 7 p.m., the eye of Hurricane Laura was located near latitude 28.4 north, longitude 92.9 west. Laura is moving toward the northwest at 15 miles an hour again. They're expecting a turn more toward the north tonight. Um, reports from the NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft indicate the maximum stain winds have increased to near 150 miles an hour, so it's a dangerous Category 4 hurricane. And additional strengthening is possible tonight before it makes landfall, uh, which is going to be in a couple of hours from now. Uh, a hurricane force winds extend outward up to 60 miles from the center. A tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 204, four, five miles from the center. And they say a sustained wind of 48 miles an hour is recently reported at Cybre Point, Cy I can't pronounce that, Louisiana. Uh, so uh, this is a really uh, dangerous storm, and it is... Right now, it looks like it's tracking. Uh, there's no sense looking at the models. We're just going to kind of look and see what it's going to what it's going to be doing, uh, and I'll try to ramble on. So maybe there'll be a 10 o'clock update. Um, so again, we're going to look at this map so you can visualize uh, where this thing is heading for, and you can see right there uh, it is uh, heading right for this area in red right here. So that's eastern Texas to. Uh, Western Louisiana, uh, in this general area, if it can thread the needle between those two major metro areas, hopefully they won't be they won't be hit like Houston or and uh, uh, New Orleans. But these other smaller cities like Beaumont and Lake Charles are are literally they could get wiped off the map. Uh, this is the kind of storm uh, that we're talking about here. So this is going to be a, a major a major disaster, uh, and uh, you know all, all we can do is pray for all the people there. Uh, as this thing gets closer and closer to landfall. Uh, let me go ahead and look at the um, observations from this so we can get some observations here and see what we got going on here. So you can see all, look at all these warnings out. 
This is just lit up here. This is just lit up. So let's see the observations and see what's going on. Get some observations here. Uh, as to what is going on here. So this, the gusts are in red here. Uh, the worst of the wind has not made it onshore yet. Uh, so uh, it doesn't seem like there's any gauges as to where this, the center of the storm actually is. Uh, so things don't look too bad right now. Uh, but it looks like, let's see, uh, the strongest one I could find, Sabine Pass North, a uh, north-northeast wind at 40, gusting to 42. Um, so this is, uh, and there's also going to be a lot of rain with this, uh, but the main thing, uh, there's going to be a heavy storm surge, and a lot of these areas are low-lying, and hopefully they've been evacuated, uh, because this is going to get pretty bad pretty fast. Uh, and I'm curious to see what the 10 o'clock, I think there's an advisory at 10 o'clock, uh, so we'll try to see if we can drag this weather update on a little longer here. Uh, but this is one hell of a monster here. Uh, just look at this thing. Um, so, uh, and there again is the satellite loop of Laura there. And this is it on here, by the way. Oh, it's the wrong one. Let's, uh, I want to show you what it looks like on here, too. Looking for the Gulf of Mexico. seem to find it. I know it's here. <laughs> well, you know what? We'll just do this here. So this is, uh, that's what it looks like right there. It's the visible, uh, that's the, the, uh, the loop there, uh, the, uh, loop from this. So look at that. That's incredible. Uh, and this is, again, the infrared loop here. So, again, this is what it looks like on the visible. Just, a perfect eye, a absolutely perfect eye right there. Well, this is not the visible. This is the infrared that's not enhanced. Uh, but wow, what incredible, incredible. Uh, and I would like to actually look at, let's see if we can change this to the visible loop. And maybe we can uh, get an idea of what it sort of looked like before the sun went down. Get an idea here. All right, so uh, let's look at the high resolution here. I have a feeling this thing's going to become a Cat 5 right before landfall. And this is very bad to have a strengthening hurricane uh, as it makes landfall. So here's the high resolution satellite. You can see, again, that perfect that perfect eye right there, just a perfect eye. And you can see it actually gets, as we advance it, you can see that eye gets even clearer. Look at that eye. So that is one... That's what you call the buzzsaw type of hurricane right there. Those are the, you know when you have that classic buzzsaw look there, you know it's going to be a bad storm. So, uh, yeah, there you go, right there. Uh, and if we put the place labels in, you can see again, uh, it is, it is going to go in, in this area right here. This is a really impressive storm. This is really impressive. Uh, I got to say, wow. Uh, thank God it's not hitting us. That's all I could say. All right, so you can sort of see, yeah, there it is. A little bit. I wish we could get an older loop, but I guess it doesn't let us do that. Um, but if we pause it right there, uh, you can see there. Look at that. You can see the convection. Uh, you can see uh, everything there uh, really uh, showing up nicely. Look at that. And again, as we, this is a good time to look at these when the sun sets because you can see how high those cloud tops are there around the eye. That's the eye wall right there. So we can just move it. Uh, along there, and you can see again. There's that eye wall. Uh, as the sun goes down, you can really see uh, just what a monster uh, Laura is. Uh, and this has like a perfect eye. So when the eye, wherever the eye goes, it's going to actually be perfectly clear in the eye, and you're just going to look around you, and you're going to have that stadium effect, uh, which is pretty uh, interesting. That happened with Michael too, and this is a similar type of storm, I think, to Michael. Um, just really, really intense. Um, so. We're going to go look at our weather for a little bit because we have our own problems to deal with a little bit. And uh, uh, we're going to go to the uh, SPC, Storm Prediction Center, because they've placed us, I believe, in an enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow. So uh, this is the other thing that we got to deal with now for us. So it was a beautiful day today. Uh, mostly clear skies, some cirrus in the, uh, some cirrus in the uh, afternoon, uh, but... Uh, Wow. Uh, so here is the day two convective outlook. Uh, and yeah, we got an not only a slight, they've put us in an enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow. 
uh, Long Island, northern part of New Jersey, northeast part of Pennsylvania, a good chunk of New York, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, and then around that, a slight risk. But this is enhanced again, so we have another shot at severe thunderstorms tomorrow, uh, perhaps. And so uh, f with that, we're going to look at some of these models here. And uh, we're going to get that. And there's no sense looking at it. This is just a now casting. I'm not going to bother looking at the models for Laura. Um, so we have this uh, thunderstorm set up for tomorrow. And uh, so that high retreats, and uh, we have... Uh, we have that return flow there, and we have like a warm front moving through in the morning, which is going to bring in that more humid air, uh, and that's going to bring in the chance for the showers and the thunderstorms. So let me go put this on the NAM 12 kilometer. We'll look at several models here. This is the 0Z, which I probably don't have enough in, so we'll go with the 18Z. So we're going to get some rain in the morning, um, and then as we move on here, you will see uh, that uh, there are thunderstorms that wind up developing, uh, and uh, they are. You can see they get they really start intensifying in the evening, just to our north, and it could get quite intense. Uh, it looks like the worst of it. Looks like it hits Suffolk County, but it could easily hit Nassau, uh, and this line comes in from the north, kind of. Uh, so it's very interesting to see uh, that develop. But this could be pretty intense. So if I put it on the three kilometer. And again, we're going to put this back on the 18Z. So you can get an idea of what it looks like here on the higher resolution NAM. Here is this line. So it really develops this really strong, it's a severe line. Now, look at this. So this is, again, got to wait for it to load. Uh, this is going to be overnight tomorrow night, probably uh, after 7, 8 o'clock. Probably more like after 8 o'clock. You're going to see these storms get close to our area. And uh, it could be, it could get ugly, it could get ugly. Uh, there you go, and another one over uh, there, so another one going over. So this is going to be, it's going to be, it could be a rough night with the severe weather. Uh, and then Friday, we shouldn't have as much. Uh, but uh, that is the NAM. Uh, let me look at the HRRR as well with that, and I think we should have the 0Z HRRR, so we can take a look at the HRRR too. And we'll try to show you what's going on and why we're seeing this happen. There's nothing to do with Laura, all right? <laughs> I know some people will probably tie it in and say, oh, Laura has something to do with it, but it actually has nothing to do with it. Uh, it's a trough that's moving through. Uh, and you would see, again, triggering off those uh, scattered showers. Some of those could be severe, uh, and we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, and then have that rain probability probably until, like, 11 o'clock or so. Uh, and so that doesn't look too good. Uh, we'll look at the dew points. You shall see what's going to be happening here. Now, we have this nice dry air over us. So, uh, let me show you what the temperatures were like today. Uh, across the area. Not available. Okay. So, we're having issues getting observations. That's nice. What about ice slip? 73. Dew point 50. So... Uh, low dew points today. Dew points were in the 40s today. And uh, highs were only in the upper 70s. So very nice. Uh, pretty nice. Look, that's typical for the temperature. High temperature across the island. Uh, I'm just curious what it was in New Jersey. It might have been a little hotter there. So let's let's see. Oh, you see already getting a little more humid there, by the way. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the dew points weren't nearly as low in New Jersey. So their dew points were in the mid-50s, and they got up to 82. So not quite as comfortable in New Jersey as Long Island. But anyway, getting back to this, uh, you will see here, again, that you got the uh, dry air, and that's just going to retreat. We got this warm front coming through. You clearly see the warm front. I don't even have to draw it for you. Uh, and uh, that warm front pushes north of the area tomorrow. But then what happens is it gets hung up, and there's like a little trough there. You'll see that kind of develops, and that is going to actually drop down and give us these chances for thunderstorms and again it's very slow loading uh, it's gonna drop down and give us the chance but it's gonna stay humid even after that trough is gone what it is gonna do though uh, winds tomorrow will be from the southwest or west southwest but then on Friday we have that more of that horrible west flow that's gonna really bake us uh, and that's uh, that means it's gonna be hot so we'll go ahead and look at the temperatures here 
And you can, again, you can clearly see that warp front right there. So temperatures tomorrow are going to get near 90 uh, across a good part of the island, um, except maybe the south shore, probably in the 90s perhaps. So, But you can see what happens here. Look at that. So there's a little bit of a trough and a little bit almost like a, almost like a semi-backdoor front. Then, and this, this dividing line here in the temperatures is going to be the focal point of the thunderstorms here. Um, or maybe that's from the thunderstorms, but still, that's, that's a pretty impressive uh, line like that. Let me look at the NAM 12 kilometer as well on this. Again, we're really slow with the models. You're going to have to bear with me. Uh, so... Here's the NAM, and again, this is the Zero Z NAM, but you can clearly see what's going on here. There's like a, a front over here that has developed, uh, and that is the front that's going to trigger these thunderstorms. It's basically a warm front that's kind of stalled out, and a little wave of energy that's moving along it uh, that's going to cause this. So if we were to draw, I'm not going to draw it, but uh, if we were to draw you could clearly see I don't need to draw. Uh, but uh, the highs, look at that. Well into the 90s in New Jersey. Not quite as bad on Long Island. Um, let's go to the GFS here. So here's the GFS. Similar idea for tomorrow. You can see that front setting up. Friday, we're in the same boat with the heat. But then we're done. By Saturday, those remnants of Laura come through. And then uh, Sunday, we should be better. But we got to get through the next couple of days. So I am not want to look beyond that right now because there's so much... There's so much going on. I'm not even going to look at the sky cover. I'm not even going to look at that. So let me do this ML Cape. Uh, this is another thing to look at here, which kind of shows instability in the air here. This is the GFS. Let me look at the NAM. Oh, the NAM doesn't offer that product, I guess. All right, at least Triple R, I think, does. Let's see. I gotta pull it back to the, the zero Z one again. Yeah. So you can see that enhanced, enhanced cape there, coming into the area there. Again, we gotta wait for it to load, but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Look at that. So that's pretty bright colors there, and that that that's the kind of stuff that'll indicate. Uh, thunderstorm formation. There's one other thing I want to look at here. It's available on the GFS, I believe. It's a product that's available on the GFS as well. Let's see. It's one of these. I think it's the F Gen. No, it's one of those F Gen things. I don't remember which one it is. I don't think it's this one. Not really showing too. I don't know. The GFS is not quite as vigorous with the convection, but I'm leading to believe that the convection is going to be worse. Uh, so uh, let me uh, go ahead and look at the Ventu Sky as well, uh, and look at the Cape for the Cape levels for tomorrow as well, uh, which basically is you know the um, this is a good way to tell how how much severe weather you're going to get. And you can see it looks like the higher Cape's off to the south, uh, and it pushes off to the south. This is the HRR for whatever reason, um, but I know it continues beyond, I'm, I'm still thinking, well, this, is, this is 8 o'clock, so 8 o'clock, it's not that terribly impressive, but it, the point is, wherever these thunderstorms form, they could be severe, um, you can also look at lifted index as well, which is another uh, inde index we use, and wow, that's through the roof, so uh, yeah, uh, definitely going to have to be on the lookout for severe thunderstorms tomorrow, as well, yeah, we're in deep red, so a lot of, basically we have a very unstable atmosphere, and again, with that front in the vicinity, that's going to provide the focal point for some lift uh, for tomorrow for severe weather. Uh, let's see if we can get, if there was another update on Laura right now. Let's see, is there a 10 p.m. update? There is a 9 p.m. update, 9 p.m. CDT. All right, there is a 9 p.m. CDT. It still has it as at 150 miles an hour. Uh, but I would not be surprised if this thing 
tries to become a cat five right before landfall. So uh, I'll have another update on Hurricane Laura as it gets uh, as it la makes landfall later tonight. Uh, but this is going to be a disaster uh, for this area. So uh, we just got to send everybody in this area our prayers because they need them. So that's going to be it for this weather update. Take care and thank you for watching.